again working with Rapid Miner. And this time, let's go ahead and build something in Rapid Miner. We're going to build a regression. We've done that in Excel. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's do that with the insurance data. So if you'll recall, the insurance data set has age, and we're mostly just interested in the numeric features at this point in time for a regression, age, BMI, number of children, and then their insurance charges. So let's use those to see if we can build a regression. All right, so I'm retrieving the insurance data. And one of the first things I'm going to do is get rid of those categorical attributes that we can't use in the regression. So I'll go ahead and select attributes. And I'll connect the output of the retrieve insurance to select attributes. And you can see retrieve insurance is basically just a retrieve operator that came in automatically when I dragged insurance into my workspace. And it says, I'm going to go into your local repository here and bring in the insurance data set. All right, let's go back over to select attributes. And when we do that, as I head back over and take a look at the attributes, you can see it defaults to include attributes and all attributes include all attributes. Well, in our case, we don't want to include all attributes. We want to include a subset of the attributes. So I, I'll select that. And now when I do that, I've got a button I can push to choose which attributes I want to select. And you'll see that brings up a dialog here in the middle of my screen. And I'll bring in age, BMI, charges, and children. All right, so I'll bring those over to the right-hand side, and then I will apply that. And at that point, I'm done with this particular operator. All right, so the next thing, I need to tell RapidMiner which attribute is going to be my label. So I'm going to choose an operator that helps me do that called set role. Now, you may recall from a previous video, when we set up the insurance data set, we could have set that role when we edited the data set itself. Down here in the data editor, you'll uh, see I could have said charges real, modified the attribute, and set it to the label feature. We didn't do that, but we can do that with the set role operator. So I'll bring that in here, connect that up. And in the set role operator, I'm going to bring in and change the role for any feature in my data set that I have. Because I just passed those four attributes through, I only have age, BMI, charges, and children uh, remaining. So I will choose charges. All of the rest of them are going to continue to be regular attributes. I'm going to turn this into my label. So this is a label attribute. I apply that. And now I'm ready to move forward and work with this data. Let's go ahead and build a model. And we want to do regression, a linear regression. So I'm going to type in regression. And you'll see, I'm going to take away my typing, you'll see as we get in here, the operators are grouped by function. So when I know I want to put some kind of a modeling algorithm together, I can expand the modeling folder, go down into predictive, say I would like to do uh, functions are basically your uh, linear function type models. So this brings up linear regression and I'll bring that in there. Okay, so I'm going to build my linear regression with the entire data set. We will move away from doing that at some point in the future, but for now, 
just getting a feel for how the tool works. Okay. And now what I have coming out, and here's where going down into the help can be useful. I'm going to take a look at linear regression. And as I scroll through, it tells me here's what's happening. And also here's what I expect coming in. My training data, the data I'm going to build the regression from. Outputs, I have the model coming out of the MOD output port. I've got the example set, which is basically the data that came in. We're going ahead and passing that through. And then we have a weight output that lists the weights of each of the attributes in the regression model. Okay. And then it also walks you through all of the parameters that you can set. So let's take a look at those parameters, which are right up here. In the linear regression, I can tell it how to choose which features to use. Uh, M5 prime is the default. That's fine. And I can also tell it to use a couple other approaches for selecting features. I can tell it to eliminate any collinear features and also eliminate any features above my minimum tolerance. So I've got a, just a few features here that I can use in my linear regression modeling tool. All right, so then I've built the model. Next thing I want to do is I want to score the model. So I go down here to scoring and I can see apply the model. And the model is the first thing that comes in. I will bring in these examples to build predictions for my model. And then I've got my labeled data and I've got my model coming out. The last thing I'd like to do is check the performance of my model. So I'll go to performance and I want to make sure under validation uh, performance, I want to make sure I find the performance for regression. So that one's here. I'll bring that in and I've got my labeled data. I can bring in some additional performance parameters, but now I can take a look at the performance of my model coming out. I can take a look at the examples coming out. And all I'm doing is double clicking on these output ports to connect them to my results wall over here on the right hand side of my workspace. Basically anything I put there, I will be able to see when I'm done with the process. So yeah, let's take a look at the weights and also the model itself. And that gives us something we can work with. So to run the model, First of all, I could save it. Let's do a save. And I'll save this in my local repository as a process. And we'll call this sample, no, insurance regression sample. All right. To run it, all I do is click on the go button right here, or I can uh, select uh, F11 on my keyboard, function key 11. This one should run fairly quickly. So yeah, I run it. Here are my results. I've got my linear regression model here with the coefficient for age, BMI, children, and my intercept. I also have some uh, statistics and measures related to each of those. So the p-value for all of these looks, looks good. I also have the weights so I can see which attribute is most important number of children has the highest weighting in this model and then BMI and age. Here I can see the example set that came through and what has happened. The original charges are my label field, rapid minor labels, will show up as green columns in here when you uh, explore data in detail, the detailed rows. Also, the predicted charges are listed here in green as well. All right. 
Now, one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to turn many of the performance measures on. So all I have right now is RMSE 11,355. So I'm going to go back to the design, go back into this performance and take a look. And you can see uh, I've got a number of first main criteria. The main one I'm looking at is uh, what we call the squared correlation. That's uh, the equivalent of R squared, basically. But I'm going to turn all of these on so that we can take a look. There's no real cost to uh, building these, especially with this size data set. So now that I've got that, I can run the process one more time. Rapid Miner, I've got mine set up to offer to save anything before I run it if I've made changes to it. So I'll say yes here. And now I run it. I've got the same model and coefficients, same attribute weights, same charges and predicted charges all the way through the bottom of my data set, which has uh, 1,338 rows to it. And here's my performance vector. So I could take a look at all of these um, mean absolute error 9015, squared correlation 0.12, correlation 0.347, and all the way up and down the list of different errors. And I could take a look at it all in one screen here uh, with this description output. Okay, so we've built a model and run a regression. Let's go back and see what we'd like to do next.